Yeah. Hey guys, welcome back to our live feeding. I'm here in our what's called an education rack. This actually has a variety of species that we use. Um, a lot of these species are used in the touch tank. And so if you've been here before, we have a touch tank where guests can actually kind of use two fingers and touch some animals. But to give them a break, we kind of house them here. They're usually on touch tank for about a month, off for up to three months. But we also use this as a cold water system for all the sea stars and horseshoe crabs and the things we keep in the touch tank. But we also use this as a kind of a nursery for our chain cat sharks and our little skates. We have them on display. Um, we actually have a chain cat shark display of adults and some of the uh, some of their offspring that have since grown up and we've put them in there. And then we have little skates. We had a, I don't know if you've been here when we had the shark zone, but we had a touch tank that featured just these two species and they bred prolifically, meaning they just kept having babies. And so we kept getting uh, these, both these lay skate egg case or egg cases the skate egg cases you've probably seen on the beach and then the sharks actually lay egg cases so we get all these egg cases they hatch out and then we'd have a bunch of babies so i'm going to feed them today they're pretty amped up so mm -hmm. i'm going to feed this entire system but i'm going to start with the chain cat sharks and they're actually divided by size and so i'm going to pull some of these lids off the reason we have lids on here and the reason it's kind of dark in here this is a normally deep water cold water species they'd be off kind of the continental coast and so we don't want to have a light we just have kind of a dim light in here but it did bring an extra light and so we can see them better and I'm going to take their lids off because they get pretty squirrely and they will jump out so I'm taking the lids off let me put those aside and as soon as I take the lids off they know I'm going to feed them so I'm going to start I'm going to start here with the little skates so if you want to look here you can see this is actually their underside and those actually aren't legs they're fins they operate like legs but you can sign to see their mouth right there and those are nostrils and then gill slits and so they actually obviously use their body which is kind of like a disc and they can stick against the glass but you can see ones in the back there over the sand I put this right here so you can see it kind of scooting along the sand and so these are little skates they're not not only are they little, but actually their species name is Little Skates. And um, the difference between skates and stingrays, they do not have a stinger, number one. And number two, stingrays pup live birth, and these guys lay the skate egg cases you find at the beach. Especially if you go down to um, Outer Banks, you'll see the skate egg cases a lot. So I'm going to feed these guys. I'll show you what I'm giving them. So I'm giving them some mice of shrimp. You've probably seen this in other feedings. These are real small shrimp, and I'm gonna actually have this in a cup, and I'm gonna dip a little water in here and then feed them, and you'll see, they'll smell it before they see it. Their eyes are on top of their heads, and so they don't really see very well. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour a little bit of this in there. Um, yeah, go ahead and ask questions. I got a question here. You'll see the shrimp coming down. Nice. Uh, yeah. Angela Pounders asks, uh, skates are cute. What are they related to? Well, they're actually elasmobranchs. They're related to sharks. They're kind of like a flattened out shark. And obviously they're very closely related to rays as well. And that includes like guitar fish and sawfish in the elasmobranch family. Um, so essentially if you think of a shark and you flatten them out, you smush them down, that's kind of what you'd have. So you have the mouth on the bottom, you squish them from the top. So that's a really good question. So you see them start to scoot along and cover food you see them they're like scooting and then you'll see their little mouth parts going they're actually sucking up the food I'm gonna keep feeding them here try and get one close to the glass you'll see the little shrimp falling down and see as you guys know they bury in the sand right so they'll kind of scurry and cover themselves over go ahead you got another question yeah I have a, a couple uh, Lee Kopage and Ann Croco asks how old are these skates uh, that's a good question too. These guys actually grow pretty slowly because they're cold water, but they range anywhere from about a month to maybe four months. They get bigger and we'll put them in the, our skate exhibit. So there's actually about 50 on exhibit, which range in size from, this is maybe a silver dollar up to about um, the circumference of a um, softball or so. 
Got another question? Yeah. Yeah, and Kelly Hodges asks, uh, Declan wants to know where they live in the wild. Um, these guys live all up and down the northern Atlantic coast. Um, this is kind of near their southern range. These guys were actually, the, um, the parents were actually caught up in Woods Hole, Massachusetts. And these guys have since, uh, these are all the offspring of the ones we originally got. I'm gonna feed them a little bit more and you kind of feed a lot at the same time so uh, they all get a chance to get food. So I'm gonna move over here to the, you got another question? Oh yeah, well uh, Tyler wants to know how do they protect themselves? Well they do have, if you go back here, they do have little spines on their backs. It's really, here, right up here. They're really hard to see, but they have little spines across their backs and along their tail. They do not have the the um, the, the stinger or the ray the barb that uh, stingray would have. But ordinarily, I mean, their main protection is essentially hiding. But if you step on one of those little spikes or someone tries to eat them with that, hopefully they'll be deterred by it. So I got. So now we're going to move over to the dogfish. I'm going to adjust this light so you guys can see here. So I, I called them dogfish because they used to be called dogfish, but they're actually technically cat sharks. They have kind of a cat-like eye, and you'll see they're getting pretty excited. So I'm going to feed them. I'm going to give them also some of this mysis. They actually have very small mouths, even though they're sharks. Go ahead. Yeah, you got a question? Yeah. So Daniel, age five, wants to know how long do cat sharks live? Uh, they can live a long time. Again, uh, most of these kind of cold water species, uh, they're not only are their gestation time, how long it takes them to be born and grow up inside the mother, also is related to how long they live. So the colder the water, the longer it takes for them to actually grow up and be born. Imagine if instead of nine months in a colder thing, a human, it took like 16 months. That's kind of how it is with the shark. So it depends on where they live, but they can live up to 30 years or so. Um, again, that's dependent on range. So these guys, there's some really young ones in here, you know, like that guy down there. It may be only a couple months old, and then you have some that are quite a bit larger. And we'll 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 keep moving along. You'll see larger ones. There's another question. Yeah, we got a we got a couple. Okay. Um, so Abigail, age nine, would like to know: uh, Do the skates and uh, and there was another person that asked the cat sharks: Do they eat anything but mice? Oh shrimp? yeah, I'm gonna give them some shrimp. These bigger guys. The mysis are really good. It's just a really good kind of nutritional product for them. Um, and you can see some of them have fat bellies. This is actually a product that's, that has it enriched with a lot of vitamins and nutrients, which we buy. So it's easy and it's really clean. Sometimes some of the food can cloud the water. They can't, it's not quite big enough. But once they get a little bit larger, we start feeding what they would ordinarily eat, which is like crustaceans and mollusks and worms and things like that. So. I'm going to move over here to the next largest section so you'll see these guys are bigger and somewhat fatter. And you see the, the coloration, that's actually why they're called chains. So it kind of looks like chains, right? And again, you'll see why we keep the top on because they're kind of, that's called sky hopping where they're sticking their head out of the water. <laughs> so I'm going to give them, I'm going to give them some shrimp. So this is diced up shrimp. And so I'm going to dip this in water because the shrimp tends to stick together a little bit. So I'm going to stir it around to get some individual pieces and these guys are obviously going nuts. And you see they can they can smell it before they see it. Yeah, I got another question. So Zach Garns asks, will they be released as they get older? I well, just joined the stream, might have missed it. Yeah, that's a good question. No, <clears throat> these guys will not be released just because they're not only have their, they're about the third, uh, well they're actually the second generation in captivity. Theoretically, they could. Um, we would likely return them back to Massachusetts if they were to be released because that's where they're from. Um, but ordinarily, what we've been doing with them, not only have we been been using them here uh, for exhibit animals, but um, we've been sending them all across the country to other aquariums. We've sent them to Maritime Museum. We've sent them all over to uh, various institutions. So. Um, they can display them and so none will be taken from the wild and so we've it's probably six or seven other aquariums have our offspring got another question yeah Isabella age six asks how big do cat sharks get um, well you see they keep getting bigger as we go along here they actually end up about two feet maybe two and a half if that um, in captivity we have some that are just under maybe they're like 20 inches 
Um, that's kind of, again, they grow very slowly. The oldest ones we have, I think, are somewhere in the uh, 8 to 10 range. It's hard to tell because we got them as adults. And um, so, again, that's another question that depends on growth rate, water temperature. So I'm going to feed these guys down here. So we have even have yet another batch. So I know you guys are probably thinking, guys, you got sharks all over the place, <laughs> which we do. We have stopped uh, allowing them to breed and started... Um, freezing the egg cases before they get viable so we don't end up with an overabundance of chain uh, cat sharks, but it kind of looks like we already do. But so there, again, you can see them on the bottom. They're largely bottom feeders. They have very poor eyesight. And so they're getting all amped up and they're missing the food because they have a much better sense of smell than they do of vision. So they're kind of going along the bottom actually smelling for the food and so when you see a shark get like in a feeding frenzy or whatever you want to call it, they, it's mainly that they smell food, but they can't see it. So they're actually frantically trying to locate the food. So I'm actually going to give them a little bit more. I'm going to give them a little bit of gel. This is just gel diet. It's a little bit more nutritious product. They're not crazy about it, but they'll eat it. So I'm going to actually, aside from these guys, I'm gonna actually feed some of the sea stars. I know you guys know what sea stars are, but we're gonna go take a look at them. So if you have any more questions about any of the cat sharks or sharks in general, the skates, just keep them coming. I'll just keep moving along. Yeah, you got another question? Uh, let's see, Zoe, age nine, do cat sharks eat other catfish? No, cat sharks, they're, again, they have very small mouths and they're small themselves. And so they eat small invertebrates. They just kind of get, like you see them down here, they just kind of scoot along the bottom and they find something kind of soft. They have very small teeth. And sharks are actually really tough, so shark skin. So they wouldn't be able to eat each other even. Um, they do get pretty rough when they mate, but they would eat small fish, but likely if it were dead. They're not really good at, uh, they're not like, uh, you know, ch chase predators or ambush predators. They're kind of like benthic scavengers. And then uh, what uh, Angela Pounders asked, what is the plan for the frozen egg cases? Uh, well, we just kind of, actually we keep them and use them as educational tools. Um, you know, we have a few, we actually have some in a small box separated from the other uh, sharks on display in the main exhibit. Um, you know, we can't, again, if we didn't freeze them or whatever, we just keep having sharks and obviously we have enough. So. Um, you know, as these get about this size here, we'll start, we, we send them around the country again. We actually overnight them uh, and they get there very quickly and then they put them in their exhibit. But the egg cases, we don't really do much with them. We just, again, save them for, uh, for educational purposes. So you can keep asking me about the sharks, but I'm going to go to the sea stars now. So again, this is, um, this is just a cold water rack here and so you'll see this is the, these sea stars here are pretty large and we've had a lot more success keeping them in cold water. I don't know if you've heard on the news in the last couple of years, sea stars have been a kind of a virus that has been affecting them too actually, but we haven't had that uh, experience luckily for us. I'm going to put that up and he senses it. He's starting to move his arms. He's going to try and grab it and they're really slow obviously. <laughs> so. I'm gonna, I might pull one out here so you can look at it, look at their legs. I'm gonna both hold the sea star and the light, so we'll see how this goes. <laughs> all right, so I'm pulling one out. And these guys are all right. They're used to actually being out of water because they'll be in tide pools and such. So you see the legs moving there. And that's actually where it would feed from. So they're very, very strong. You can see the legs on the end here, reaching for something. So they have little suckers on the end of their feet and what they'll do is they'll hold on to something you see that here too right there and he's curling around backwards because he wants to flip over I'm gonna put him back so what they actually do is you see all these clam shells in here they'll take a clam shell get on top of it pull it open stick their guts inside of it their actual stomach and digested from the inside. It's actually really neat. So they'll be kind of hunched over 
with a clam inside of it and they're so strong it's just they just inevitably pop it open and i don't know if you know how hard it is to open a clam or an oyster but they're incredibly strong you got another question yeah uh so lyndon from newport news why are the sea stars so sticky um well that's their way of moving around so a lot of things would eat a sea star especially a small one like this guy so they can they have to stick down so if i want to like i'm pulling on them right now so if I wanted to eat him, that's his, he'll kind of lock down, he'll kind of suction on there and you can see his legs. And so they get really hard to pull off. And it's also the way that they open, the way that they eat. They have to use their legs. They don't have, you know, traditional jaws or arms or hands. So they have to open it with their legs and then use their stomach to eat it. So I'm actually gonna go up here and there's a few other guys in here. So we got, these are actually spider crabs. And they're actually in the touch tank too. So I'm gonna drop them a piece. They're reaching for it. Boom. So you see they're called spider crabs because they kind of look like a spider. <laughs> and they're, they're pretty silly, as you can see. Uh, they have a lot of character, but um, they're not uh, super geniuses by any stretch. So I'm gonna feed this one over here because he's gonna get anxious. This is all one system, believe it or not. And so they can smell food in the other tanks. And so they're kind of waiting for their turn. So he's eating too. I'm going to go over here and feed these guys. You'll probably know what this is. This is a blue crab, right? So blue crabs aren't traditionally cold water. They can, they can stand it, but um, they're really common around our area. They'll eat, people don't realize it because they fish with chicken necks and stuff, but they eat a lot of vegetation. So you'll see right here, again, he's kind of smelling for it too. You can see they, they smell a little bit with their legs. He's kind of shoveling in his mouth right there. You got another question? Yeah, this actually goes back to the, to the spider crab. So uh, Sarah McMahon asks, um, how big is the brain of the spider crab? <laughs> uh, not big. So I don't know if you've ever, like, some people eat crabs, I do not, but if you've ever eaten a crab, it's hard to find you know, the, their internal organs except for maybe their liver and their gills, but um, it's very small. A lot of invertebrates, the brain is kind of strictly like a visual cortex kind of thing. Crabs aren't, the, I, <laughs> I kind of made fun of them earlier because they're silly, but blue crabs and spider crabs to a degree are actually pretty clever. Um, blue crabs can get out of anything. We have a, that's one of the reasons we have a, a top on here is because they'll get out, they'll be walking around the museum if we let them. Um, so we have to keep a top on them. The, the spider crabs, uh, I, I wouldn't say they're as clever as a blue crab, but um, you know, they have their moments. So I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna feed, there's one last thing here. We have a lobster. I don't know if uh, Britt and Patricia are watching and Alexis, they love the lobster, but um this lobster was a you you when you catch lobsters you can only catch you, you can catch females but you can't catch them with eggs and it prevents lobster fishermen from keeping pregnant females right so if they accidentally catch one it's illegal to sell them and so the people we get these these live animals from had a lobster that had eggs and so they weren't allowed to sell it so they donated to us so she's actually a believe it or not, a lobster rescue. So we're gonna go down to the bottom and look at her here. I don't know if she's gonna eat, but I'm gonna throw it to her. So let's see, I'm gonna throw it over in her corner here. So it's on her claw. So you see, she just grabbed that. So she's kind of eating it now. And she's really sweet. People don't give lobsters enough credit. They're actually pretty smart uh, creatures. We, uh, we do a lot of enrichment with the one on exhibit. This one's got a little claw on this left side, an irregularity that probably broke off at some point and then healed over, but when they molt, it'll come back, you know, full, like, as a full claw. So it's really, they grow about a third every time they molt, they'll kind of split the shell and back out of it. And then just like the crabs, they'll be soft for a while. So they're really neat. They're really neat animals. But um, she's just, again, a rescue that we saved. We've saved some from farm fresh and some animals that would have gotten eaten otherwise. Um, so when you think, when you go, <laughs> go to the grocery store and think about the lobster in the tank, we may end up with them sometimes. So we're, uh, we usually get ones that are too big or kind of strange colored. 
or a female like that to kind of howl. So, all right, well, if you guys have any other questions, feel free to ask us. Um, these guys, a lot of these guys, if you come to see us when we're open, you'll see the sea stars and the crabs will be on exhibit in the touch tank. So, and they're all, look how excited they are to see you. Um, so everybody's reaching out for you. And then these guys, the sharks, the skates will go on the skate exhibit downstairs in our world of darkness. And the same thing with the um, uh, chain cat sharks. And you never know, you might see them if you go to South Carolina Aquarium or some of the other places we've sent them, you'll see some of our sharks. So I appreciate you joining us. We're going to have another uh, feeding at uh, 2.30. I'm going to feed the big tank upstairs, which has the sharks and the drum and spade fish and the triple tail and all some of our favorites in the gag grouper, of course. So make sure you check out our natural education series on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and of course, check us out on Facebook, on our website, thevlm.org, and please consider donating to our emergency fund to help provide the care for these animals. You can see I'm wearing a mask and gloves, and we're kind of, we have very few people here, but we're doing our best to take care of these animals, and we really appreciate your support, and you know, we hope to see you guys again soon, and Maybe I'll see you at 2.30. See you later, guys.